Paneloids Podcast. Paneloids Podcast. Podcast. Jeremiah here with Dimitri and Pierre. No Kyle tonight. The inmates are running the asylum today. So on the docket, first things first, episode two of Secret Invasion has dropped. Thoughts, gentlemen? They really pulled us back in. Episode one was a little bit of a low, like a lot of information, not enough action and shit. So what was cool is they brought us back to what movie was that? Captain Marvel? Yep. They brought us back to all the Captain Marvel stuff. Yeah. And then they went from that right into the murder and then into, you know, why these characters or these aliens in particular are so in the shit. Like they were here from the beginning and, you know. From that movie, I guess that was be the 90s, right? Yep. So they've had essentially like 30 years to fuck shit up and have all this power. So we got three confirmations. Maria Hill is dead dead. That's 100% true. I don't know if she's dead dead. From what this showed it, there are over okay. 100 million scrolls on Earth. Yeah. And Nick Fury is definitely showing a different side of himself than we've ever seen before. Yeah, we talked about this last episode. We talked about how you felt that Nick Fury wasn't really himself. You definitely see that more in this episode. The million of scrolls already here had a feeling that that was already a thing. And it sounds like there's definitely things that are being hidden away. It didn't seem like Talos was giving him all the information. So, and I think Nick Fury knows that too. When Gravik called Talos a failed general, it makes me curious, did Talos try to do this beforehand and something went awry? Also, who thinks that Don Cheadle Rhodes is not Rhodes? I didn't think of that. Rhodes would not talk to Nick Fury like that, in my opinion. So I think he's a scroll, 100%. There's a reason why I feel like he wants to get Nick Fury out. And I think even Nick Fury, although he seems like he's out of it, I think he realizes it too. He's Nick Fury. Like, there's no way that he just is, like, completely gone. Like, I think we're meant as an audience to believe it. And I think just like any of the other scrolls or anyone else that he's interacting with is believing that Nick Fury is completely like out. That's the perception I'm getting. I still keep it around what we rated the first one. And I think I gave it like a five or six, seven. I'm probably 7.5. Better than the first episode. Hooked me a little bit more. Spoiler alert. Fury married to a scroll. That's fun. Big spoiler alert on that one. Now, does he know? Oh, he has to know. I don't think he knows. He has to know. It's Nick Fury. Or did they replace Fury's wife? So, okay. That same scroll was in the meeting room. So remember the flashbacks like 95 when he's meeting the scrolls and he's telling him that I'm going to be there for you. She's holding Gravit because he doesn't have family, whatever. She's there for him. That's the same scroll. How does he not realize that's the same scroll? He definitely knows. That's what I'm thinking. Like she was involved in like kind of the operations on the scroll side work working with Nick Fury, unless she went rogue too. And she was like, all right, we're going to take over Nick's wife. I don't know. It seems like maybe he fell in love with a scroll and like he doesn't care. Yeah, but now you want to watch episode three. Like after episode one, yeah. I didn't care to watch episode two if I didn't have to. But now I'm invested. I do feel like Dimitri nailed it. We're more invested now. Moving on into news. So first things first, Dimitri. Cliff Blazinski. Cliff Blazinski. Now tell us what's going on with him. Cliffy B. He doesn't like to be called that. <laughs> he is the lead art designer for Gears of War, the first three Gears of War games, working with Epic. And then ultimately we're working with Microsoft. He straight away... From Gears of War, and then he is one of the first people to work on Fortnite. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So, like, he worked on it before they even knew, like, you know, that was going to be a hit. So, he's working on a book. He's writing, comic writer now, and it's called Scraper by Image. And I can't give you everyone else's name, but it looks interesting. There's a dog on the cover. Okay. So new image title from the old art director for Gears of War. That sounds like it's going to be interesting. And it's an image book, so you kind of can't go wrong at least trying out the first issue. Moving on to the next bit of comic book news. This one only really affects me as opposed to anyone else that's a part of this podcast. Valiant has <laughs> announced that it has licensed all of its publishing to another independent company called Alien Books. I don't 100% know what this means in terms of the future of Valiant. As of the last few months, actually the last year or so, Valiant has only been putting out one title a month and it's been a very slow roll for them. Alien promises to put out more titles a month, promises to bring back trade paperbacks because they've been absent for like three to four years. So it's really going to be interesting to see what happens. Me personally, good friend Fred, I hope you're sticking with the company. You've been with Valiant since the beginning. I hope you also transition over to this Alien publishing just so you can continue this ride. But if not, thank you for the work you did for Valiant for the, all that time. And 
we'll see what the future holds. So moving on from the comic book news that doesn't affect anyone else but me, Invincible Season 2. Do we have a date yet? I thought it was in the fall. November. It's supposed to be appearing late 2023. Okay. So that's awesome. Really looking forward to that. The first season was epic and it made invincible books go through the roof they've since kind of cooled down a little bit so hopefully this will get them back up again your guys' thoughts on invincible season two i think they've taken this long break so i think we're gonna get three fairly soon after two at least a year probably something like that so that'd be cool i didn't read deep into the books did it go multiversal in the books did go multiversal in the books there was a couple mini series that followed other characters there was a companion series i'm just glad that it was actually something that happened in the books and it wasn't just like everyone else we're all going multiversal but christian bale refusing to show up in the flash he refused a cameo good for him but what is not great for our missing comrade is kevin smith said in his podcast that the Batman Beyond movie that would have Michael Keaton in the Bruce Wayne role is all dependent on Flash's success. So that doesn't look too hot. I just don't think you're going to get Michael Keaton again. Essentially perfect casting for that, and it seems to be going nowhere. So we have our Superman, and we have our Lois Lane for Superman Legacy. Hell yeah. We have David Cornsweat and Rachel Brosehannon. I don't care. Care at all? I mean, they look the part. He does look like a young Henry Cavill. And Rachel Brosahanan, or however you pronounce that, she does look like she'd be a great Lois Lane. Moving on to other rumors and news. Scrolls have been showing up in random local news broadcasts across the nation. Very good advertising for Secret Invasion. I like it. Fun little Easter eggs for those paying attention. And I just love the idea of a crotchety old woman being very confused why a green person is behind them. I don't think there's been this good of promo since the stuff that came out for Smile. Yeah, that's a good point. It's similar to also like the Ant-Man promos where they actually had like little miniature fight scenes going on around the city that you would just find on park benches and on bus stops across New York City. Actually, if we're going to talk about, you know, big publicity things, the Barbie dream house showed up in Malibu. True, yes. Do you think Oppenheimer is going to take the opportunity to also... (laughs) Which, I'm glad that you bring that up. I know this is off topic. This isn't on our list, but the director for that said that it has an ending similar to Inception. I just don't understand how it could. Like, he did it. He built that bomb, and then they bombed those people, and those people died. I don't see how the ending can be similar. Well, the ending to Inception, spoiler for those who haven't seen the 10 to 11-year-old movie, Leonardo DiCaprio just gets reunited with his family. I don't know Oppenheimer's personal life that much, but I know that he was a very troubled person after he created the bombs. I know that he went on a national broadcast and said, what have I done? after they realized Uh. what was going to happen. So maybe it's going to end on a more cheery note than his actual life kind of happened. But yeah, Oppenheimer does look like it's going to be great. Barbie looks like it's going to be definitely interesting. The cast of Barbie is kind of insane. It's pretty wild. So I'm excited to see how that all plays out. Unfortunately, there's some rumors going on that Beyond the Spider-Verse has been delayed two years and that we won't be getting it until 2026. I hope that rumor is not true. Cool. So for the five people that listen, we're going to be bringing up somewhere in the realm of probably four to six Marvel DC books weekly, and then probably two independent books of what we're currently reading, Polar Pass, pretty short segment, just whether you should be pulling a book, whether because it's good for value future values or just because it's a good story so we'll let you know today i think we're just talking about ultimate invasion i think that's the only thing yes ultimate is invasion. on your table i have a bunch of comics on my table but this is the only one we're going to be talking about ultimate invasion written by john hickman i was talking about this with kyle this feels like this was supposed to be donny cates's book it definitely feels like it was supposed to be donny cates's book they actually have a special thanks to donny cates on the credit page oh wow yeah ultimate invasion number one eight ninety nine price point for what isn't even much of an oversized book i think it's a 44 pager so the 899 price point is a little steep but it's worth purchasing john hickman really kills it 
not to spoil the story for you, but it revolves around the maker, Evil Reed Richards, and it is absolutely fantastic. There's a bunch of variant covers and one by Pierre's love interest, Peach Momoko. That is a beautiful Ultimate Wasp cover. I got the Russell Dodderman cover because I love Russell Dodderman. He's fucking fantastic. I'm really excited to see where it goes from here, and I'm really excited to talk more about pull and pass in our future segments. Pierre has a wonderful idea with that, so I'm glad we're going to keep that going. You guys talk about Ultimate Invasion and maybe spoil it for some people. You want us to talk about it and spoil it for people? Give us an idea. I mean, what do we got going on? And I'm upset, by the way, everyone. So <laughs> if you're listening, this isn't just a spoiler for you. It's a spoiler for me. The maker proves himself to be the most fittable entity within the 616 universe and then creates his own new ultimate universe. The ultimate universe used to be called 1610 and now it is 1616. Love that. Where does this pick up i know there was an ultimate universe (laughs) and there's your regular universe let's go back to 2015 when secret wars happens it was an incursion event and all other universes kind of died secret wars was essentially crisis on infinite earth marvel secret wars the only ultimate universe people that survived was the maker reed richards and miles morales and in this issue when Reed decides he's going to go back to the Ultimate Universe, he's going to create a new Ultimate Universe, he actually asks Miles if he wants to come with, and Miles turns him down flat. And I love what Reed said, that if the shoes were turned, he wishes that Miles would have asked him. It shows that although the Maker has no humanity, there is kind of a human still there. But the big spoiler of it all is he finally creates this whole new universe, and we're taken back to the field trip where Peter Parker gets bit by the spider, except he doesn't the maker stops it from happening. So this new universe, this new ultimate universe, as of right now, as of this issue, has no and will have no Spider-Man. Is Miles going to make the jump? We talked about how Marvel has their own universe being set up. Sony has their own universe being (laughs) set up. They're going to have their Kraven, their Venom, their Miles Morales, and Marvel could do the exact same thing on their end. It doesn't necessarily matter. Does one become the ultimate universe? One becomes your regular Marvel universe. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has always leaned slightly towards Ultimate in the terms of the way that Nick Fury has been portrayed, the way that Captain America has been portrayed. It isn't straight Ultimate, but it leans more Ultimate than it did traditional 616. If anything becomes the Ultimate Universe, it would probably be the MCU versus Sony's because Sony doesn't have enough tools to make an Ultimate Universe work for them. Also, will this affect beyond the spider-verse maybe it kind of hints towards that and peter parker wasn't bitten earth 42 actually this earth i don't know it's going to be interesting to see it's kind of a standalone issue in terms of it's going to come back eventually we just don't know what ultimate invasion means that we're going to get a new ultimate universe john hickman's going to be at the helm like he should be it's going to be fun now is this going to be dropping weekly or is this a monthly issue i believe it's monthly but I believe this is a one shot and then we're going to be getting the ultimates. It's definitely going to be exciting. And when that happens, that will definitely be on our pull and pass segments. That's going to be a pull. Half of this group has been obsessed with ultimate universe for a while. It's kind of a no brainer that at least giving this a try and you won't be disappointed. The eight ninety nine price point is a bit steep, but the artwork is incredible. You get to meet the Illuminati again. The 616 read pulls them back together and you get to see how destructive the maker can be and how he can kind of just do what he wants and no one can do shit literally we also have the marvel's post-credit scene leak i did no i heard about it the rumor guy doesn't have the rumors kamala khan she was talking about like she'd want to meet hawkeye kate bishop Mm -hmm. so apparently in the marvel's post-credit scene we're going to be getting a teaser towards young avengers and pierre you have a book that will be nice and pretty for when that kind of comes around i didn't even think about that yeah, you have a Young yeah. Avengers number one director's cut sign. And so Kyle actually asked me to show off my recent dumb purchase. So I'm going to go grab that really quick and I'll be back in a second. Oh my God. There it is. How are we doing? You sound like you're in a submarine. <laughs> Okay, so do you have the full costume or is it just the mask? I just have the mask at the moment. It's actually modeled after Paula Rivera's artwork, as you can tell from the lower eyelid. I recently got this off the Spidey factory on Instagram. Took a little bit longer than it was supposed to, but it ended up working out. It's great material. It breathes really nice. I can see very well, minus directly in front of me is a big blind spot. And it can be modified a little bit more. The lenses can pop right off, so... 
You can kind of see my eye, but... No, I don't see a nose or a mouth. It's a face shield, so... To keep it rounded. To keep it rounded, and you can kind of see where it cuts off. I'm ordering it! He has a lot of different options. You can get multiple different options. She just dropped a Superior Spider-Man one. I'm gonna get that one. That one looks amazing. Okay, this one? Kind of can't see your screen. Yep, that's the one, the Spidey Factory. Spidey Factory. Shout out to this guy. We are all ordering stuff. I'm going to Disney in August. I now have my costume. Analyze Podcast. <laughs> Analyze Podcast. Analyze Podcast. His name's Ironhide, baby. Woo! Now I'm going to put him on the shelf behind me.